Good morning and welcome to St. Francis of Assisi Episcopal Church here in Utah, Tennessee. We are blessed that you are here in this space with us, whether in person or joining us virtually and whether in real time or later. Your prayers and your presence enrich our worship life and our community. And we thank you for being with us. If you have not already, please download from our website, our worship booklet. Our website is sfaec.org. And in it, you will find all our songs, all our readings, as well as all our prayers. Our opening hymn this morning is God the Sculptor of the Mountains. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness. By the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 65 in unison. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be performed in Jerusalem. To you that hear prayer shall all flesh come because of their transgressions. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you will blot them out. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation. 
O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the seas that are far away. You make fast the mountains by your power. They are girded about with might. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. Make the dawn and the dusk to sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain, you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with of your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. And let them shout for joy and sing. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Joel. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the later rain as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten. The hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army, which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. Then afterward I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves, in those days, I will pour out my spirit. I will show portents in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there shall be those who escape. As the Lord has said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. The word of the Lord.
reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defence, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them, but the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me from his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like the other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified, rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. May only God's word be spoken, and may only God's word be heard. Please be seated. Do I need to do something with the mic? I have a confession to make. I am not as well read as I would like to be. A minor sin, surely. But according to our homiletics professor at Sewanee, excellent preachers are well-read preachers. And I can't say I disagree with him. Reading helps us to explore and come to new understandings of the human condition. In fact, researchers at Princeton and the University of Toronto have documented a link between reading, specifically fiction titles, and improved social cognition particularly noting an increased sense of empathy over those who read less. In today's gospel lesson, I find empathy to be largely a miss. The Pharisee in the temple alongside a tax collector, a fellow Jew who, as an agent of the Roman state, was a ready target for the Pharisee's condemnation, prays, God, I thank you that I am not like other people thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. This leads me to another confession. I don't really like this Pharisee. Anyone else feel the same, maybe? Yeah? It would be exegetically easiest to stop there. It's a choice many preachers have made in the past. But to borrow a line from an author that I do know, Walt Whitman, in his book, Leaves of Grass, I discover myself on the verge of a usual mistake. It is, indeed, easier to vilify the Pharisee, to tell myself that I am not in any way like that person in Jesus' parable, instead identifying and empathizing with the humble tax collector. But in doing so, I then become the judge of the Pharisee. I become part of the sum who Jesus addressed his parable to. We are all prone to upward and downward comparisons, a behavior which Leon Festinger in 1954 succinctly termed social comparison theory, which I learned about in one of my communication classes while at Augusta University. In short, it was his belief that we engage in this behavior because we have an innate drive to gain accurate self-evaluations. We want to know who we are, 
where we fit in within our various societal contexts. We are equally prone to think, God, thank you, I'm not like those other people, as we are to say, God, I wish I could be more like so-and-so, that coworker who just got promoted, the parent whose children always seem to excel, or in my case, the seminarian that somehow has found spare time to read anything other than assigned textbooks. That is part of that drive, too. However, the upward comparison component is easier to confess to, isn't it? In our context, upward comparison is held up as being aspirational or goal-oriented, getting ahead. We don't like to acknowledge that in trying to get ahead, we often leave others behind. The tax collector standing far off would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Was his sin so great that he could not face God in prayer? Or rather, I wonder who told him his sin was so great that he could not, should not lift his eyes up to heaven. Had the tax collector made an accurate self-evaluation? Or was he responding to society's pressure to fit into the lowest level of its hierarchy? See, our downward and upward comparisons hurt. They hurt others, and they hurt ourselves. The Pharisee was not doing himself, his soul, any favors by measuring his earthly success. Through his parable, Jesus is calling on us to acknowledge this truth. But I feel there is one truth even greater that he is pointing us towards. Oscar Wilde, one of my other favorite reads, along with Whitman, this being, of course, my pre-seminary days, is quoted as saying, Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. And this is my last confession at least in this sermon today. I haven't always liked myself. Any hands on this one? Maybe so? Yeah. I have not always seen myself as the child of God that I am, worthy of love and grace, worthy of God's empathy, God's mercy. I have made comparison after comparison with others over the years, upwards, downwards, sideways, not realizing that the only comparison that matters is that of my life compared to Jesus's. I have allowed others and their downward and upward comparisons of me and mine to them to find who I am to be, where I fit in. But we, each of us, are to be God's. And we each have a place in God's kingdom here and in heaven. In being God's beloved, we are called into a grace that guides us, leads us to embrace the distinct difference between being humble and being humiliated. Jesus, in his parable today, calls us to one and not the other. The tax collector, despite his occupation placing him on the margins of the societal and religious life of the Jewish community, Recognize the truth in the words from our psalm this morning. To you that hear prayer shall all flesh come because of their transgressions. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you will blot them out. To be righteous in God's sight means being able to admit when we have erred, when those upward and downward comparisons have put distance between the divine within ourselves and our divine God. Doing so, however, does not require us to, quote, walk on our knees for a hundred miles through the desert repenting, as Mary Oliver says in her poem, Wild Geese. To be righteous in God's sight means being humble without feeling the need to humiliate yourselves or others, because we are all beings unique, immeasurably precious beloveds of God. Society's bounds on our personhood 
cannot constrict the vastness of God's love, mercy, and grace for us. Another favorite author of mine said this, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Have empathy for your neighbor and yourself. Seek and see God in your neighbor and yourself. That we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command. For in doing so and by your righteousness, you will show us awesome things. How awesome our life is in you, O God, our salvation. Amen. Let us continue in prayer and worship on page 13 of your worship bulletin with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Pontius, Pontius Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and of the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise, make us love what you command, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Lord, show us your love and mercy. In you, Lord, is our hope. On our military prayer list this week, we pray for Casey Osborne. On our short term prayer list, we pray for Susie Baggett, Lynn Bagley. Catherine Bailey, the Brookman family, Rusty Bird, Jeremy Clark, Russ Cole, Becky and Lindsay Kordsmeyer, Bill and Vicki Dowley, Lennis Duban, Mark Elliott, Brett Harnett, Robert Hawks, Hazel Honeycutt, Christy and Darren Honeycutt, Cassidy Lewis, Sandy Lewis, Tegan, Max, and Blaine Lewis, Allison Lonis, the Loy family, Laura Mays, Allison McCants, Carolyn McCleary, Warren McCleary, Hank and Arlene Pellin, Matthew Pruce, Nevaeh Roberts, 
Barbara Selman, Zach Settle, Darla Smalley, Robbie Tulloch, Buddy and David Usmiller, Gloria Weaver, Fred and Suzanne Wood, Mary Virginia Woods, Allison, Christine, and family, Keith, Lisa, David, for those impacted by hurricanes and severe storms. We pray for those who have died, for Catherine Camp, Cora Corbin, Charlie Dickens, and the Reverend Dr. Linda Hutton. On our monthly prayer cycle, we pray for the Family Justice Center and their partners. On our parish family prayer cycle, we pray for Becky, Zoe, and Lance Everett Kiss Kaiser, Denzel and Kathy Landstreet, Kirsten and Taylor Lankford. For birthdays and anniversaries, we pray for Ryan Wargo, Maureen Scott, and those celebrating anniversaries. And at this time, ask your own prayers of prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings, either silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Beloved of our Lord Jesus Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace. today and I will do a quick little show and tell <laughs> just to make sure um, as we have people who might not be familiar our practice here is to offer communion to all this is the Lord's table all are welcome at it one option we have is to receive bread and if you want it dipped in wine I will have the mini chalice and I can help you do that if you'd rather receive bread and drink from the common chalice, we also have that that will be to my left. And then over here on the right side, Josh will have the tray with the mini chalices. If you choose a mini chalice, the bread is in the top and you just peel back the foil at the top to take the bread, then turn the mini chalice over, peel back the foil for a, a little sip of wine. It's about a thimble full. So you're welcome to receive any of those ways. All are valid. You're welcome to come forward for a blessing, whatever you are most comfortable. But this is the Lord's table, and each and every one of you is most welcome. Let us hear again from Psalm 65. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation. Thank you.
All things come of you, O Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks to Christ. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being. Sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways. But we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that sings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. of sin and death, and to reveal the riches of your graces, you looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless of his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died, Jesus was at table with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks to you, gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, remembering Christ crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with Francis and all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. 
through Christ and with Christ and in Christ in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. These are the gifts of God for the people of God.
post-communion prayer at the bottom of page 18, let us pray together. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food and the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Please be seated for a few quick announcements. We've already had a full day of worship and Sunday school, and right after this, at 11.30, your vestry will be meeting in the parish hall. This is a perfect time if you've not stayed and want to know more about vestry for you to do so. We're even providing pizza for anyone who comes to vestry. Not that I'm trying to bribe or anything, but just know it's out there. And then at 3 o'clock this afternoon, we are in for a very special treat. Chatty Wampus, a trio of clarinet, piano, and flute, flute played by our own Cindy Solfest Wallace, will be performing here in this space. And for one of the numbers, we're going to be introducing something new to this area of the United States. The trio in here and the Carillon out there playing together. It is a special offering. Please come back. We'd love to see each and every one of you. We'd love for you to bring friends and family with you for this very special offering. We'll feed you afterwards. What's not to love? So come on back and be part of this very special gift to the community. We'd love to see you be here. Tomorrow, Mother Pat Cahill and I will hightail it out of here because under orders, when the bishop says show up at clergy conference, we must. So we will be there Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. You will be in the capable hands of our deacon Josh Weaver while we are gone. And if you need anything, the office number is always on. And there's even a number you can press, you can listen to the instructions. It'll tell you if you need urgent help, how to do that. So know that we are always connected with you all if you need us. And then, as always, we'll be back Wednesday night, 5.15, to pack sack packs. 6 o'clock, worship in the parish hall. And at 6.15, we'll continue our Bible study of the first book of Samuel, we'll be doing chapters 7, 2 through 9, and we'd love to see you come be part of that. It's never too late to join us, even if you haven't joined us before. And then we'll be back here next weekend to do it all again. And we always welcome your prayers and your presence with us. Now on this Sunday, when we are reminded that we are indeed beloved children of God. May God the Father bless you, God the Son heal you, God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God the Holy and Undivided Trinity guard you, save you, and bring you safely to that heavenly country where God lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please join in singing Tell out my soul. Mm -hmm. 